What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, in the last episode, we showed how to install high charts and AM charts. We did a little comparison of the onboarding process for both of those third party libraries for rendering stock charts with JavaScript. In this episode, we're going to take some pricing data that we have ingested from Alpha Vantage and display it on this on a high chart graph uh, so that we can see the price data for a company on on high chart. So let's go through that process now. So if you'll recall, this is where we landed in the last episode. We have a chart that has some price data and we have some flags. This price data is just being loaded directly from a CDN provided by, or like some sort of JSON link for some data that was provided by HiChart for demo purposes. And so what we're gonna do is load this data instead of being from HiCharts, we're gonna load it from our own database. Um, so the very first thing we want to do is create a new API endpoint for rendering back the JSON prices for a company. Now, if we if we dig into and look at the data that's coming back, so this is the CDN that is providing the data for high charts, and if we look at this, it is just an array of uh, arrays where there's two elements in the array. The first is a Unix timestamp, and the second is the price for that day. And so that ends up showing us sort of this, this data here. And this is actually like a USD to, to euros exchange rate that's uh, on display as like the, the demo data for high charts. So we need to have an API endpoint that returns JSON similar to that. So let's generate a new API controller. So what I wanna do is say Rails G controller API slash. And I think what we wanna do is call it maybe prices. And yeah, so we'll just, it'll, it'll just be like um, a new prices controller inside of the API namespace. And the reason I'm using API slash here is that I want the controller to be namespaced. I want the route to be namespaced uh, under API because users should never actually like visit this URL. Instead, it's gonna be a, a, a URL that we hit purely for returning some JSON data that is not like human readable. So, Let's take a look at what um, what this created. So if we go to API prices controller, you'll see that the, the name of the controller is API colon colon and then prices controller. I actually like to use API, uh, the API namespace. So I'll use the module to wrap this inside of an API namespace. And we'll just use the default application controller. That's fine for now. Uh, I do wanna skip verifying authenticity. I don't really care. Uh, we're not gonna be accepting post requests here anyways. Um, we're going to just say def show. We'll have one endpoint. It'll be a show route where we return the prices for a specific company. Let's actually make it an index route because it's technically returning several prices. And the index route will require that a ticker is passed in or that some company information is passed in. So I think it makes sense to pass in the ticker to make it easy. But I wonder if we want to pass in the company ID instead, which would make it um, so that we couldn't really like easily reuse it outside of this app. But I think I might like that because then random users won't, hopefully won't be fetching prices directly from here. So let's make it, let's make it take in the ID of a company and then return the prices for that company. So let's just say uh, company is equal to company dot find params ID, uh, or maybe like params company ID. We will say render JSON for company dot prices. And let's just see where that gets us. So if we go to our routes file, we need to add a new resource here for this prices controller. And you'll notice that we have resources charts, but in this case, because it's gonna be an API controller, we wanna say namespace, namespace API do. And then inside of this namespace, we're gonna put uh, the prices controller. Okay, so this is gonna make it so that we can we can add an, an API prices endpoint that'll take in company ID is equal to like one or something like that. And that'll return the prices for company with ID one. So let's see how this works and if it's working. So we'll say API slash prices company ID equals one. Awesome, wow, that was like almost too easy, right? <laughs> uh, but we have a couple issues. So number one is that like, the data that's coming back here is in a format that is different from the data that we are expecting, which is this array of arrays. Instead, it's 
an object where the keys are dates and the values are prices. And so, and the prices over here are string values instead of decimals. So, uh, we have a couple options. One, we could change the way that we're actually storing prices on the company object to just match what we expect here. Or we can build some sort of transform on the front end or on the back end or a combination of both. And I think that the easiest thing here might be to actually just store them differently. Uh, I'm trying to think about why we might want to store them like this, right? Like there is a, there are, there's a slight benefit to storing it as a dictionary here where the key is the date and the value is the price because technically we could ask for the price on a specific day for a specific company. So we could say, hey, for company number one, give me back the price that it was on 2020 11, 17, and we'd be able to index into the hash at that specific date and get back the price rather than needing to iterate to find that date. Um, so what I'm thinking is that it would be valuable to map, to, to convert these prices from this JSON format into this JSON format on the client right before we pass it in to our, to our chart chart handling. So let's do that. So we'll go back to our uh, prices index, or let's see, charts index. So right now our chart just has um, a div with a container and then high charts. I think we might actually ultimately make this show up on like a company show page where a specific company has specific prices. But for now, we're just sort of still messing around and getting it right. So let's go into our high charts data. Instead of making this fetch call to the CDN, I'm gonna comment that out so we still have access to it. And then I'm gonna change this to slash API slash prices. And that will give us back some price data, price data that we want to ultimately like map into uh, data, which is gonna be what is expected here. So this is gonna be, this will be fun, this will be fun. So let's, the way that I'm thinking about doing this is adding a breakpoint right here on the terminal. So we'll reload and then we can just experiment in the console. So let's go to slash charts and let's go to here and refresh the page. And it's saying 404 not found API slash prices, but it totally, wait, we were just there. API slash prices. Oh, you know what? We need to pass an ID, right? Yeah, yeah, So here, um, company ID is equal to one. So when I'm prototyping, I usually don't worry too much about making it super generic. So like, you might be wondering like, should we be putting this on a company show page right now and making sure that it's like dynamic and it renders the different charts for different companies? Uh, and those are the types of things that I like to figure out later because I think those are sort of the easier steps, right? Like okay, we could just put this into some, I don't know, some tool that takes in the ID for the, the company and then like knows how to render the prices for that. Um, so instead, I wanna just get it working, get the hard parts, like the unknown unknowns working first, and then I'll come back and figure out like exactly what this thing looks like um, when, it's, when it's a real, real situation. Okay, so refresh the page. And now we should have, if we hit this step over, we should have some price data in a minute. So let's see, step over and okay, maybe we come back here. Let's put a breakpoint on that point and then say play. Okay, so now we should be able to experiment with price data directly in the console. So I think I want object.entries for price data and that will give me back an array of arrays. And so if we look at the first one, that is a, okay, so it's a tuple here of the date as a string and the number as a string. So we're gonna be able to parse, parse float the second value. And so, yeah, let's see. So we wanna map this onto, um, I think we can actually say like the date is the, f okay, so map takes a function as an argument, right? So map is gonna take in a function, and I, I wonder if you can see this. All right, let me move this uh, to, sorry, one sec. Let's get this thing in the bottom, there we go. 
Okay, so object.entries for price data is gonna give us back a list of tuples where the first element is the date and the second element is the price. Um, and so we're gonna take that array of tuples and we're gonna map over it. And I believe we can destructure. So we can use array destructuring in the parameter list for the function we're passing in and say, this is the date and this is the price. And let's say for now, we wanna just get back the date and parse float of the price and see how far that gets us. Now, if we look at one of these items, okay, so now the price has been properly converted from a string to a float. So that's step one. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> uh, we lost our code here. Okay, so we have object entries.map, and then we wanna change the date from a string value into a Unix timestamp. So I think we wanna say like date.parse maybe. I can never remember these ones. So let's just grab like the first element too. Oh my gosh, was it that easy? I don't know, we'll see. So we're gonna say const data is object.entries price data dot map. And we're gonna have some arguments and the arguments are gonna be destructured into an array of the date and the price. And we wanna return a new array where we have the date and the price, but the price parse float, we, we, par, we parse the price string value into a floating point value. We say date.parse the date value into a, a Unix timestamp. And then let's just refresh the page and see what happens. And, hmm, okay. So we see a warning here. What is the warning? What is this? High charts warning number 15. <laughs> All right, what is that? This happens when creating a line series or a stock chart where the data is not sorted. Oh gosh, in ascending order. Okay, so, um, all right, so zero, or actually, let's see. Uh, so let's go back and add another breakpoint uh, here. Where do we go, where do we go? This is too big, I can't actually see it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so webpack, webpack, which one are we on? Application, packs, I don't know what that says, high chart, okay, here, here's where we're at. So let's refresh the page. Now if we have data uh, zero, dot, data zero, zero, data one, zero. Okay, now these are two, these should be like two Unix timestamps, right? And if we look at the first one, 401, and if we look at the second one, uh, 331. Okay, so I think it might be just in the in the wrong, or like the opposite order. Like I think the, the first element in the array needs to be, okay, so this is why we kept this, this is why we kept this uh, this around, this, this URL around. So let's take a look and see. So the first element in this array is 2007-0101. And the second element in the array is 2007.0.102. So we have it ordered backwards. So I think we can just reverse it. Let's see, dot reverse. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> Let's see, so I'm gonna just clean this up just a little bit so we can see it all and refresh the page. And what do we got? We don't have any warrant. oh my word, look at that. Look at that, that is a real, those are real prices, holy moly. Okay, now what's really cool is if we go out to like, okay, let's say, okay, so this is gonna be like the year to date price, right? So for, this is for um, PagerDuty. So we go to finance.yahoo.com and we go to PagerDuty. Uh, and then we look at like, what is the one year price look like? All right, so we've got some stuff, we have a little peak and then we have it flatten out. So we've got a little bit of stuff, we have a peak and then we flatten out, super cool. So the scale, the scale, there we go. If we like squish it in like this, then it ends up looking a little bit closer. So this is definitely, this is definitely working. And that's kind of like what our goal was for this, this video was just to get the prices onto our chart. So uh, just as a quick recap, we had to create a new controller. We created a, a new API controller called prices which uh, looks up the company by ID and renders back just the price data that we got from Alpha Vantage 
earlier and then mapped into just a, a date to close of the day price for a certain company. Uh, and then we implemented um, a quick transform here in JavaScript where we got the entries for those for that dictionary and then we mapped those entries and parsed them from string values for dates into Unix timestamps. And then we also parsed the string values for the floating point price into a floating point value. And then we had to reverse it because it expects that uh, the data is in sort of ascending order. Um, and then we just, we haven't yet actually messed around at all with high charts to change to change the look and feel for high charts. But uh, at this point, I'm pretty happy with what's uh, what we've got here. Thanks so much for watching. In the next episode, we're gonna show how to build a company show page where we'll embed these charts and then we will load the chart based on the company that we're looking at. Um, and then we're gonna put some flags based on trades. Cool, thanks for watching.